Hi, it's Jill with Crickflix, and I am working on some prints little for a baby shower. Um, I do have a stack here of scrapbooking that I will be doing throughout the day, but I'm going to get this done first. Uh, this is the 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 one of the images from the Divine Digital Diva on Etsy. And he is 18 inches tall, and I wanted to use my 12 by my 12 by 18 inch paper because cardstock because it's really really heavy. So even though he's 18 inches, that paper's 18, and it comes right right to the edge, and it's not one that you can tilt him because the crown is too big. A lot of times when they're 18, and I want to have a space at the bottom for cutting, I tilt the image. But on him. He, the hat, the crown, the hat, the crown made it not possible. Anyway, I cut him off at the waist because I wanted to put put this on my paper lying down this way and then I turned the feet on this way so that it was it would fit on that sheet and cut out completely where I didn't have to cut out anything by hand. Um, I added the little piece that I like to put at the bottom to connect the two rather than using the strip like I used to do and what I did on this one when I made my piece down here and attached it I colored it the same color as the skin because when I cut it off if there's a little bit of a void when you put it together I don't want it to show so I colored this the same color the skin so that when I put it together it doesn't show so let me put those together very quickly um, and let me see if I have any news. Um, sending prayers out to anybody that knows of anybody or um, just the horrific, horrific what happened in Las Vegas last night. My, my daughter called this morning to tell me and um, she was just there getting married uh, a week ago, a week and a half ago and it didn't matter where it was, it's just the fact that these kind of horrible, horrible horribly ugly things happen. Um, I am not going to turn this into a depressing video because I just I can't do that. I need to stay positive praying for all those people but you know I, I, I had mentioned on my YouTube that I did last night or on my Facebook this morning about this horrible horrible thing is that you know it's it's kind of like children. I think of, of kids when they grow up and and when they're babies, they're straight from the mouths of babes, as, as the Bible would say. Whatever comes out of their mouth, you know, they don't know to lie and they they don't know the ramifications and of, of certain things that they do. They're conditioned. I think I believe a lot of them are conditioned and are just our our lifestyle. But I do believe that we spend so much time posting ugly po postings on Facebook about somebody did something to you or about the president about religion I just somebody that I know and um, ended up having to unfriend because I don't think that Facebook is a venue for people um, absolutely bashing our country and our president country everything but we elected our president whether it's a Democrat or Republican we elect him and then we go and if we didn't get our way we decided to bash him and you know just a little bit of a heads up I lived out of the country for nearly six years and the truth of the matter is, is the Americans are spoiled so bad that they have no idea, no clue how fortunate they are to live in this country. And when I lived, where I lived, and I know most people already know, but um, I lived in Venezuela, which is going through horrible, horrible things now, and, and I've got family down there still, and it breaks my heart. But um, if you are texting someone or uh, or emailing down there they're watching you get their eye on you 
and they don't take lightly to it. Uh, disrespecting and bad mouthing and things. Of course, the way they're going about it is a little bit barbaric. I don't want to compare the two, but we take freedom of speech and push it to the nth degree. We take everything. We've got the right. Everybody just feels like they just got the right to behave in any way. And I don't believe that this has anything to do with color, religion. Uh, we make that as an excuse. We use that for an excuse a lot when we need to look at ourselves and see how kind are we, how rude are we, and um, mean and vindictive and jealous and I mean it's endless. You can go on and on about really bad attitudes. And I have been through a lot. I'm 65 years old and I'm not going to tell what all I've been through because it doesn't matter. I'm not looking for... I, um, we use it as an excuse for bad behavior. We always have an excuse. It's somebody else's fault that we behave bad. And now everybody wants to know what's going on with him. And I'm sure when it comes right down to it, we're going to get some horrific thing that... Or find out something that um, somebody else is at fault. There was a reason. But but we ingrain that into our children at such a young age. Because they listen to us. And they're like sponges. And they just soak up everything and anything we say. But um, we make our choices, you know. We all get up, wake up in the morning... And we make a choice, and, and the choice is to do right or wrong or have faith. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that need, need help, and I am not above helping. I work hard, and I help out as hard as I work. I, I don't believe that I have to run around feeling as obligated, and, and I do it because I want to, and it comes from my heart. But... Um, I'm going to stop littering these up. I'm, I'm on, I, I should stop preaching, guys. Where am I going? I, where am I going? I need to keep my mouth shut. But it does break my heart. It really does. It makes me feel so bad because there's always something. We've thrown politics into everything, which just absolutely is absurd. You know, um, it's just like grow up. You know, we, we um, and I'm not going to profess to be any uh, political party because to me... I, I do not know enough to sit and tell somebody else how they need to do something. And I know that whoever we elect, it was because the majority. And I personally, um, <laughs> I had a real issue with, with when Trump ran. It wasn't because of Trump, his qualifications or anything else. It was because when he did that show, you're fired or whatever it was. I just didn't like him. Um, but, you know, you have to put those types of things aside. Because no matter what, I do believe that we've had a ton of lousy presidents and we've had good presidents. And we make it through, but we, the people, just need to stop blaming and pointing fing fingers and stuff. And, and I'm not saying everything that they do is right by any means, because that, that is not the case. However, it doesn't make it any more right for bad behavior. It just does not. And I'm watching what's going on in Venezuela right now, talking with my brother-in-law and sister-in-law that live down there. And he's military, so he's government. And... Kind of like, well, whether you believe in what they're doing or not, you go with the flow or, or the consequences. There's consequences. And we raise, our, we raise our children that there's consequences for bad behavior. And I don't know why we think that, that when we become an adult that changes because it doesn't. There's still consequences for bad behavior. But I'm all over the place, guys, aren't I? I know some of you will write me and tell me incredible words of encouragement for things. I've never had anybody do anything but that. But I will be the first one to admit um, I couldn't even be a teacher. Uh, I don't have what it takes. I could be. I could have been a preacher. 
<laughs> probably wouldn't have been in my congregation, but I could have been a preacher. Um, just very sad because I've got going on 10 grandbabies and I so much want them to have a good life and I so badly want them to learn to be respectful and respect other people's opinions and respect authority and you know respect your neighbor kids you go to school with things like that I just absolutely and again there's consequences for choices we make if you make good choices, there'll be good consequences. If you make bad choices, you're going to have bad consequences. But instead of pushing all the blame on the government or religion, their lack of or whatever, you know, I don't like to shove religion down anybody's throat because religion is a very personal, very personal thing. However, I think if it wasn't for religion, a lot of bad things, for instance, Kendall, when she went through her chemo, I was so thankful for my beliefs because it gave you, it gave you peace. It gave me peace. And a lot of times, if that's all you take away from it, is you just get some peace about any, anything, any hand you dealt, instead of sitting around blaming. I put a lot of faith that everything was going to be fine. And put Kendall in, in his hands and just asked to have the strength to get through it. And my family united, and I mean, I remember when the night that Kendall was diagnosed, six years old, barely six, it just turned six. I remember sitting around on the floor with my daughter and my grandkids, Kendall and her siblings, and mommy and daddy, all sitting around on the floor. They had showed up at the house with, um, sleeping bags and had decided they were spending the night with family because or spending the weekend so they packed up puzzles and games and we we're all going to sit around and play all of these games and puzzles and try to think of something positive and have fun and laugh so while well, we waited for her test results because we knew we knew it was you know a couple different things that they had said they were looking at we knew in your heart you know um, that it was not going to come back as a nothing. And they said we'd hear from them by Monday. However, we got a call shortly after we all got into playing the game and um, they said that Kendall had leukemia. They'd already gotten the, the results back and they wanted her back at the hospital immediately. And I remember my son-in-law grabbing Kendall and throwing her in the car to get her back up to the hospital. And my husband was in the car with my brother-in-law. We, I called to tell him and then had to had him on the phone, scared to, I shouldn't have called him while he was on, I should not have called him. I should have waited till he came home. But I wanted him to know before he dropped his brother off because I knew he was gonna wanna be there. So I told him that the results had come back and that she did have leukemia. And breaks your heart to hear the pain and the horrific sounds that between my husband and my, my brother-in-law, because that's, that, that was not what they expected. Um, and, but none of my kids were here. We called to let them all know. And within probably 10 minutes outside most, all of my kids and grandkids were here at the house. And that, to me, is what I want to see people build, is to have, to know. I mean, you don't have, you don't even have to be religious. You don't even have to believe, because if you just behave yourself, and if everybody lived the kind of life and don't even profess to be a Christian, but just live the kind of life as a Christian would. You know, the Ten Commandments, anything. Like I said, you don't even have to believe, but you can't go wrong by behaving. And I watched because um, all of my sons, or fam I shouldn't say my sons, my family, um, not, every but not all of them believe, and they have their opinions and whatever. But you know what? They respect ours. And knowing 
that that is what got us through. And somebody said this morning, made a comment on Facebook, and it was just awful because they were saying these fools out there praying when praying wasn't going to help a thing. I thought, if you don't believe praying helps somebody get through some of these tragedies, then you are sadly mistaken. Anyway, those... Guys. <sighs> wow. Okay, let me talk about... <laughs> I can't believe I just... <sighs> How long did I go on about that, guys? I'm sorry. I am so sorry, but I just, you know... Sometimes I need you, I've got a bunch of you that follow me that are kind and, and just, I, I think, the world of you. And I look forward to your feedback and I look forward to your encouragement that um, sometimes I just get a little bit off track. But you know what? I need it. Um, I need to know that I'm not alone. And so I like when somebody, I like the feedback and hearing somebody wrote back on my post this morning while I lectured on Facebook. It wasn't a lecture being mean. It was just kindness. Treat people, I mean, you know, and pray for those and don't tell people not to pray because it was already whatever. Um, you guys are, you guys have been there and I love you all for it. You have no, no idea the impact that a lot of you have had on my life. And I would like to sit and name off names um, in particular. However, if I was to forget one, I don't have them written out right in front of me, and forget one, I would be devastated. But you know who you are. Well, I guess it, I should say it's all of you. You make a difference, and I like to hear that I've made a difference. And we live in hard times, guys. Sounds like a Harry Potter quote. But somebody was to saying this morning, the end is, is near. Um, I think history, my brother, right before he passed away, was giving me this big, he was reading this book, and it, it was so far over my head. I think it was even over, we were at TGIFs, I think it even went on top of TGIF. But it was so far gone, and so far, and then when I started thinking about it, trying to re relive the conversation, um, my brother was very, 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 very smart. And he was reading a thing about uh, about history repeating itself, and kind of looking at where we are now and where we were so many hundreds of years ago, or I don't know how many years ago, whatever. But um, we always say history repeating itself, and by the time we left the restaurant, my husband and I were looking at each other, going, "I have no idea what he was saying." And I wanted to have that conversation with them more because it was very interesting. I was just having a hard time applying it to life. But it, then he passed away. We'll, have, we'll fin our, finish our conversation when I hopefully one day get to go see him. Not anytime soon, guys. Not in a hurry. Not pushing it. But um, I didn't mean to do this. So, guys, uh, I may not upload this. But I might because I'm just looking for some encouragement after reading some absolutely horrific Facebook posts, you know. Um, we need to pull together. We need to be praying for one another and just being there for everybody. If you don't want to pray for them, just know that you're there and, you know, you can have people out there that are friends of yours that are in that horrible shooting and not in, in something that was just a no reason. It's like, I just, I can't get past that. But... God knows there's a reason for everything, so I'm, that's when I toss it over to him and try and do the right thing um, where I can and when I need it, right? So, guys, <laughs> you will either see me on an upload or you won't. But the next thing, I'm going to finish putting these together because there are five of them. Um, and I will take some pictures when they're all dry. I thought it would be quicker and easier for me to get them glittered and then put them together. So I will do some photos, but my next shots are going to be of Nancy Fonseca's um, scrapbook page layouts that she was doing that I printed out. Uh, the pictures weren't as clear as I wanted to be, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to come up with a plan to add to them, so um, I'm going to work on some of those. So I will be back. Alrighty. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. 
Hi, it's Jill with Crick Flex, and I am finishing up an order that Jenna has done. And it just needs a couple things to, to finish it up and get it out the door. Um, it is princess, uh, two foot princess pieces. Let me see if I can. Oh my goodness gracious. And I don't know how many they were supposed to be. I suppose I could just count them. Okay, here it is right here. Nine, two foot. And Belle, Cinderella, Ariel, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Aurora, Jasmine, Mulan, Pocahontas, Tian, and Rapunzel. So, now, what I'm doing first is on Tiana we have here. And all of them have the additional um, lace put on them. And I've got to put a flower right in here. This is an absolute perfect printout. And Jenna did a fantastic job on these. I tell you guys, she is getting better and better by the day. Every time she does something, it was better than the last time. And she is loving it. So, got my fingers crossed that that um, after the new baby comes, that maybe she'll be able to quit hairdressing and do this full time. That's our goals, but you know, we'll see how that goes. We're starting a, a different, going down a different avenue, <clears throat> but I have all the confidence in the world um, that Amy and Jenna will make it happen. You know, if you want something bad enough, you can make it happen. And guys, the first half of this, no, I don't think it was the first half. What was I working on? Oh, the princess that I got to put together. Um, I'm so sorry. I, I, I apologize. I get going on a tangent and start lecturing and sound like a preacher. And guys, I don't mean to do that. I really don't. Um, I get carried away because I get upset with things that happen that I think are so, so horrific and and it just it makes me feel so bad to watch the things that we do to ourselves and I say do to ourselves because we do we do we let it happen and I can't get that one in I'm going to have to take and he painted these I believe some of these after he drilled them then the paint holes get paint in them and they don't go on so I'm gonna use that one I'm putting all of these on big faces. She is adorable. <laughs> my new chair is getting away from me. The bearings fell out of my t wheels on my, my other chair. Uh, bearings were everywhere. I, and I had no idea what I had thought when I f started following, finding these bearings on the floor. I thought one of my necklaces had broke. And so I just would pick it, pick it up thinking it was part of a necklace and and put it in a box of beads and I'd find more and more and more and kept thinking where on earth because I'm not even wearing anything that's broken well it was the bearings in the wheel of my chair so I told my, my husband don't go out and get me new wheels go out and get me a new chair since I was duct taping the arms together and you know it had seen its better days so he got me a new chair which I was thrilled because now I can fly across the room so nice and smoothly but just like the other wheels that I had on uh, <laughs> the chair fault pulls out front of me I tell ya oh uh, well let me see what I'm doing here is I'm putting just a little bit of white kind of crochet type lace um, on the bottom here because for some reason, this happens a lot, and anybody who uses this software will, would agree that sometimes the pieces um, don't cut off exactly how you want them to. And there was a little piece down here with the peg showing on the glue, and I didn't want that. So I'm putting lace on it on both sides. Actually, Jenna's the one that noticed it, and when she dropped them off, she had a couple things that needed to be finished on them, so that was one of them. And that is what I'm doing. I need to go out on a on a lace shopping trip. I need to go over to Hobby Lobby and absolutely empty their shelves because they have the best trims 
if of any store I've been to. Love them. So I think I'm going to take the girls, both Amy and Jenna, out shopping for goodies to work for work. And I think they will have fun doing that. Could be wrong, but I am thinking they would really like it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned in the first one, in my first my video um, this morning of the Little Prince dudes, uh, that Amy did complete her run. And I don't know if I would call it record time. She did very, very good timing on it. And numerous people made comments about that. But I wouldn't know a good time from a bad time. Because if I went running 26 miles, mine would have taken me four days, not four hours. I don't remember what the time was that she did on it. But she completed it. And it was done about Doug and Blake and the dog Gus going to every little spot that they had a kind of a check-in where you can leave hi to the racers. And he followed her. He's so cute. He followed her on her run and um, with Blake. And Blake would be out there yelling, Hi, Mommy! It was so cute. And I'm going to have to have my husband cut these off because I don't like that drawer being over where I have it now, guys. It's very inconvenient. But um, here we have um, Jasmine. I was going to call her Ariel. My husband needs to cut this peg off a little bit. Love, love, love the way she did the lace on this all the way down the front like that. You know, like I said, she's getting better and better and better. She's blowing me out of the water, guys. So when I walk away and I no longer am doing this, I feel I will be leaving it in good hands between the two of them. Then we have Air, this is this is Ariel. I was going to call her something else. I don't know what, but this is Ariel. She glittered up here all around on her. Must have been her necklace pearls, and then put the lace down here of her petticoat that was going out from under her dress. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this a little bit on a slant, so it's flowing out of there, and you'll never know the difference, but I will. And get this on a base. There we go. Um, my husband, when the mail came to him, when my husband went to Colorado last month, he drove with his brother, and he ended up getting a ticket. And the ticket was for something bizarre. I can't remember. Here we have Aurora. Um, it, it was for like running from the law because my husband and his brother were visiting and didn't realize the police was behind them for speeding. And so the cop was kind of one of those that must have been a bad day or a bad lunch, one or the other. But um, he gave a citation for a few different things and it, it was a couple hundred bucks, which I wasn't very happy about, but what are you going to do? It is what it is. And so then he went to something with my son in July after before his trip to Colorado and I got a notice in the mail today for $260 fine for unpaid tolls. Here we have Tangled Rapunzel. Love her. Love her with the lace down here. Again, Jenna, my God, is she good. She's doing awesome. Um, anyway, um, he got this for unpaid tolls because instead of paying the tolls as they did the trip, they just drive through and then they get billed with the tolls. And so my my husband texted a message to my son to let him know that he had a $260 fine for not paying the tolls. So he sends, emails me a package of the tolls that had been paid. Okay, here we have Mulan. And there's kind of a rose trim down here on the bottom with pearls in the center of each of the buds. And this is just very simple, the little pink ribbon up here. Simple, but I think beautiful. Anyway, he sends me a receipt where all those had been paid. So I called the people to find out what was going on because I had the whole entire list with confirmation that they'd all been paid. Here we have Snow White and her little bit of trim that I need to trim off. There we go. 
and I'm running out of bases, which means I can't make the last three stand. I'll have to get some more bases. Anyway, I, I, I called them and told them and gave them information. They put me on hold and they came back for a little a little while later and they said, Do you know know what Christine Coop? That's what she said, Christine Coop. And I'm like, No, no idea. I don't have a clue who that is. So anyway, I said, spell it. So she spelled the last name. Well, when she spelled the last name, she pronounced it wrong. Not only did she pronounce it wrong, the first name, name she said was Christine, and it was Kirsten. And Kirsten is Adam's girlfriend, but we call her Kiki. So when she, when she said Christine, I had no idea what she was talking about when it actually was Kirsten or Kiki. And the last name she called Coop is C-U-L-P, and, and she pronounced that wrong. So when she spelled it, I go, well, yeah, that's my, my son's girlfriend. She said, well, she went online and paid all of these, and she found them all paid, but she said that the driver's license, or the, dry, the license plate was from Illinois, and it wasn't, it's Wisconsin. So, of course, it didn't match with the citation that she had, and it's all computerized, so nobody noticed. But thankfully, that's all it was, and I, I'm going to give her such grief and hard time for that. She put it that they lived in, or that the license plate was an Illinois license plate. Anyway, we took care of that because I was so mad when I when I saw that come in the mail because I said, my, my son is so bad about that at times. He's the youngest one, and, you know, that I shouldn't, we all did things when we were young, but he has a thing with parking tickets and and um, not, not a thing. He has a thing for forgetting to pay him or whatever. I guess you'd call it forget to or just, eh, I don't know what he does. And then all of a sudden we'll get a notice in the mail. Um, and I always tell him, you don't realize, dude, you get a $10 ticket that costs you 40 now because you didn't pay it the day you got it. But at least this one, he was not at fault. He had paid it and he had done it correctly. He paid it within a few days. Well, he hadn't. Kirsten had. Kiki had paid it. So, and I would say something in reference to Adam and Kiki. However, if she by any chance falls across my YouTube videos and happens to see this, I would be in deep doo-doo. So, I probably just said too much as it was. Kiki, if you happen to watch this, we adore you. She's graduated from nursing school. Don't know when she's taking her nursing test. She won't tell anybody. And I think she's um, doesn't want anybody asking, how'd you do her? You know, I understand where she's coming from. She's a nervous wreck about it. But once she's got that, we got a nurse in our family. Well, sort of in our family. I'm going to consider her family already. I tell you, I have been one of the, not me, my husband and I have been so unbelievably blessed with our children and our grandkids that it's kind of hard to have a bad day. You know, after I started preaching on that very first, that film that I was doing on those princes, prince, not princes, prince, ugh, various prince, well, anyway, I was going on about life and being happy and everything and then I thought about it and thought you know what maybe some people just think maybe I don't have any tragedy or any sad things that happen in my life and because I, I I know it's just the circle of life you know you you do what you have to do at the time and it is what it is not meaning you don't get upset or you don't you know whatever <clears throat> everybody's got their ways of handling tragedy but uh, Having a six-year-old grandchild being diagnosed with leukemia is a tragedy. Um, and this is where I say with, with, our, with, with God's taking care of her, she's doing great, and, and everything is good. But through all of that, none of us walked away saying, why her? And somebody else had asked my daughter or... I can't remember how it went, but it was like, why her? And the answer was, well, why not? Why would um, Kendall be 
any more special to God than any other six-year-old child? You know, if you say, why anybody, I would be a better question, but to say, why her? I don't think any is less deserving or more deserving. Um, it's just the way it happens. Let me see if I have any pink rosebuds here. But then the loss of my brother that was my best friend. Um, that, uh, that I'm still having a tough time with, guys. It's, it, uh, that pain is not going away. <clears throat> I'm thinking that come the holidays, uh, I have a feeling that, I'm going to put one down here like, no, she only had a single rose. I better not do that. I will throw the story off. Anyway, um, this Christmas is going to be very, very hard because we, we have traditions that have been going on for years and years and years with my brother and his children. They aren't coming this year because my nephew lives in Norway with his family, his children. He's divorced, but he's not going to be coming back here because his children are there. So um, my sister-in-law and my niece are flying to Norway to spend Christmas with them there instead of them coming here. And I think part of it is, is they've come to my house for 40 some years for Christmas and I just don't think they're going to be able to handle it. Well, I know they can't. They're not coming because they can't handle it um, without him being here too. And I don't know. I'm going to have to do a lot of planning and talking with him through the holidays to get me through. You know, I just miss him so much. I told my husband the other day, you would think it would get easier. With me, it's getting harder. I called my older brother the other day as a last resort just to kind of do some stress relieving. <laughs> hard with my potato my mom. It gets very, very hard. And then it just makes me miss my brother so much more. He was my go-to guy and loved him dearly. And I still cannot believe. And Mark, if you're listening to me and you can hear me, we were all ready to go scuba diving again. We went scuba diving together and I would I said I want to make one last dive with him my husband and my sister-in-law, him and I, and my granddaughter, I have a picture hanging in our bathroom, a uh, picture of my husband and I scuba diving um, down with all the, it was really, really cool with the fish and everything down there, and my granddaughter, Isabel, every time she goes there, goes in there, she always goes, there's you and Papa in the water with the fish told about the story, I don't know if I told this or not, about the story of my husband um, accidentally ripping the mouthpiece out of my mouth when I'm like 30 feet down, I think. I can't remember how far down it was. But he accidentally tore the, the mouthpiece, the air, out of my, my mouth. But when I put it back in my mouth, um, I bit down on it so hard for the rest of the dive, and it was an hour-long dive, but I bit down on it so hard that when I got, when we were through and came up from the dive, I couldn't open my jaw to get the mouthpiece out. I'm just adding some copper glitter to the top of her arm here. I think it's a shadow, but I like, I like it. I'm doing it anyway. But anyway, um, yeah, we got out of the water, and, and I've told jokes about what would I, we would do to him. Um, with the people in Mexico joking around and picking on my brother in Spanish and him just sitting there going, hmm, see, 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 not having a clue what we were saying. Um, but it was, we told him at the, at the airport on the way home what we were saying. He said, you big dummy, you just sit there and shake your head, going, yeah, 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 you know. He's, 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 he was just crazy. Just ugh, so much fun. Loved him dearly. Um, he had thrown my husband in the in the ocean when we were driving around by ourselves and my husband lost his watch that the kids had bought him 
And so it was a big joke that when my brother would go back to Mexico with a friend or his wife or anything, that's where he actually, actually that's where he died at the place that we were at um, diving. That's where he had the massive heart attack. But every time he'd go, he would send us back a, a beach that there'd be no people there and there'd be a watch sitting in the sand. And he'd write my husband back and say, I found your watch. It was a joke for quite a while. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't talk about it. It makes me miss him so bad. Anyway, I got these all done. Jenna did the, the vast majority of this work was done by my beautiful daughter-in-law. I will get some pictures and get this uploaded. And then I'm going to put together the baby prince. Um, not princess. Prince is plural. And this guy. I've got a bunch of those put together. And then I will be back at scrapbooking. Oh, I was going to show you the page that I did. Where did I put it? Oh, up here. I had just kind of glittered up a page that Nancy Fonseca does. She does these layouts. And I just print them out on 12 by 12 sheets of paper. And then try, what I was going to do is put the actual picture on top here, but did not realize until I printed them out that these were like 5 by 7s and I had printed 4 by 6s so I couldn't use them. But I didn't want to throw these away because I still think they're cute. They're just not glossy pictures. So I kind of glittered up and kind of had some things popping out. Um, I don't know what else I might do to it, but I don't want to throw these away so I'm going to mess around with them and... Maybe we can figure out, you guys can throw in some suggestions on what I can do with them. And watch what you say. Anyway, I will be back. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, I'm just going to finish up this one of the baby prints. And putting that together. And as I've threatened in the other videos, I will be then scrapbooking. Now... Um, when your pieces are wide enough, like this little man is, if you have paper that you didn't print out correct for you or anything like that, and I know it happens to everybody because I hear about it, um, I tell you not to throw it away. Save it because you can use it on you can use it on the other side. However, if it's something really tiny, you you have to be very very cautious as to how wide you have down here, the space where your peg goes, and all the way up and through here, because you want to be able to glue these sides together so that that does not show from the other side. Sure hope that made sense. It did to me, but up in my little head, a lot of things make sense to me that don't to others, like my husband. He's down there packing, and he thought he had like three or four orders to pack. Um, however, now with Jenna and Amy both working, I sent him on the errand to pick up what they had ready to go. And uh, he was going out to dinner with my son, and he's not anymore. Because he's got, all of a sudden, the three orders he thought needed to go out turned into nine. So he's down there packing and hungry. So he's going to have to resort to eating my homemade chili that will blow the, uh, burn the hair out of your nose. It is... Oh, hot. I didn't realize that the red peppers that I was putting in were fresh pepper. They were newer. They weren't as old where they start to lose some of their kick. They are new and had a lot of kick. And my mother ate the chili and I asked her how it was. And she goes, eh, it's got a little bit of kick to it. So I had some and it made my eyes water. So my husband's passing up a meal of chicken wings that he loves in order to eat my <laughs> chili. He's not going to like that. I think I might have to go down there and tell him when I'm done to go out and grab a bite. He is now screaming at me. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to have to, I will go ahead and finish this off camera and go and answer him because he apparently doesn't know that I'm filming. So. Anyway, I'm just going to finish up and put some pictures up of all of these done together, and we will see you at the scrapbook table. Bye-bye.